Part 5, The Motive Qualities The third of the several classes of character qualities is that known as the motive qualities. The term motive means that which moves or incites to action. The several general qualities composing that class are as follows. Deficiency and negative lack of concentration lack of persistency instability slothfulness. 3. The motive qualities positive norm concentrated attention persistent determination stability industry. Excess and negative over a concentration stubborn obstinacy inertness slavery to work. You are now asked to consider each of the above stated qualities composing the class of the motive qualities. Concentrated attention concentrated attention consists of the deliberate voluntary concentration or focusing of the attention upon the subject or object under consideration. Attention is the application of the mind to any object of sense, thought, or memory or, more technically, attention is consciousness concentrated in order intelligently to conquer particular object or subject. Attention has well been compared to the contraction of the pupil of the eye in the processes of sight. The law of attention is, the fewer objects we consider at once, the clearer and more distinct will be our knowledge of them. Concentrated attention is the focusing of the mind intently upon that which is before it to the exclusion of all else for the time being. The power or faculty of concentrated attention distinguishes the great individuals of the race who have done things the mental masters. It has been stated as a general principle, every individual who has accomplished anything worthwhile in any field of voluntary endeavor, has done so largely by his or her developed and trained powers of voluntary attention. No individual lacking in development of the power of voluntary attention ever has accomplished anything worthwhile while such lack persists. Concentrated attention meets the requirement of the touchstone of positivity, and is to be considered as a positive character quality for it truly tends to make you stronger, better, and more efficient. It is one of the characteristics of a strong and well trained will and by some is held to constitute one of the most important of the typical activities of the will. The deficiency and negative of concentrated attention is known as lack of concentration, and is marked by a tendency to scatter and diffuse the power of attention, the result being that inattention results. Lack of concentration, or the tendency toward inattention, is a weakness of character and must be classed among the negative character qualities. The excess and negative of concentrated attention is known as over-concentration, and is marked by a mental state closely resembling self-hypnosis. It results in absent-mindedness concerning all else except the subject or object under attention. Moreover, instead of resulting in increased power and clearness of thought, it really produces the opposite this because the mind is practically put asleep by reason of the tiring of the attention. Beware of inducing self-hypnosis by an abnormal and undue forcing of the powers of attention. Keep in the middle of the road. Persistent determination Persistent determination consists of the persistent, persevering, tenacious application of the powers of the will the firm, steadfast, steady, fixed, resolute constant determination to carry out that which has been undertaken. This quality of character is found in the strong men and women of the race who have surmounted obstacles of environment. It is one of the characteristic marks of such individuals. It causes one to be sure you're right, then go ahead to stand by one's purposes to hold on even when things look the darkest to refuse to surrender to adverse circumstances. It is one of the elements of the master formula of attainment. It is one of the most positive of the positive character qualities, and should be carefully and determinedly developed. The deficiency and negative of persistent determination is known as lack of persistency, or irresolution, and is marked by an absence of the characteristics of the positive quality it is a negative, weakening destructive mental trait, and should be overcome. The excess and negative of persistent determination is known as stubborn obstinacy, which is really a perversion of the positive quality. It consists of a stubborn, mulish obstinacy which refuses to move away from a given spot. Those manifesting it often regard it as doggedness, or firmness, whereas it is rather a willful, unreasonable mulishness and obstinacy unwilling to move or to be moved even when every reason dictates the move. It is not will, but willfulness which inspires this mental state. It may be cured by mixing reason and other positive qualities into the elements of persistency and determination which, without the mixture, have reached the degree of perversion. Stability Stability consists of the mental state of steadiness, steadfastness, fixedness, durability, 
firmness of position and foundation. Those in whom it is well developed are marked by a thoroughness, a continuity of purpose and of action, a general stick at Oida Ivanus. They are to be depended upon, and are regarded as reliable and to be counted upon with confidence and certainty. They are always there, and are always known to be on the job. Persons in whom this quality is well developed are the solid individuals in any walk of life. The quality, in its norm, is decidedly a positive quality, for it tends to make you stronger, better, and more efficient it should be cultivated and developed. The deficiency a negative of stability is known as instability, which is marked by fickleness, inconstancy of purpose and action, waywardness, excessive desire for and habit of change, restlessness those in whom it is marked are known for their weathercock nature, their tendency to change at each shift of the breeze of circumstance, their fickleness, their irresolution, their inconstancy, their general lack of dependability. The quality has every mark of negativity, and should be inhibited. The excess and negative of stability is known as inertness, I. E. Tendency to remain inert, sluggish, passive, and indisposed to activity or movement. Persons of this type tend easily to get in a rut, to get set in their ways, and to become fossilized. They are incapable of change even when the change is required and is approved of by reason. This quality is a grotesque caricature of true stability it is really a perversion rather than an excess. Industry Industry consists of the active and energetic manifestation of diligence, perseverance, assiduity, and interest in useful employment and work. This quality consists not merely of the outer manifestation of work, but also of the inner inclination and desire to work, to accomplish, to execute to do things. The successful man in any walk of life is industrious, whatever else he may be. He finds a joy in his work, because it is his channel of expression and manifestation. He realizes to the full the truth of the adage, blessed is he who hath found his work. He delights in tearing down in order to reconstruct, in building up in doing, in executing, in accomplishing. Industry is a positive quality, for it makes you stronger, better, and more efficient. The deficiency and negative of industry is known as slothfulness, which is marked by disinclination to action, sluggishness, laziness, idleness, indolence, etc. This quality is so manifestly negative that no further comment concerning it is needed. The excess and negative of industry is known as slavery to work, which consists of the degradation and perversion of normal active industry into a habitual routine of slavish drudgery and arduous toil and travail, of which habit is the motive power, and which lacks the spirit of industry pursued for a definite end and animated by the desire to accomplish. A writer says, work and labor imply strenuous but not necessarily excessive exertion. Toil implies a painful and exhausting severity of labor. Drudgery implies mean and degrading work, or, at least, work which worries or disgusts from its minuteness or dull uniformity. Work employed toward a definite end, and animated with interest, desire and ambition, is positive but work performed from mere habit, without interest or ambition, is a mere oxalic performance, and becomes negative in its effects. The former exalts, the latter degrades.